I want you to I want you to go back with me in time to the date of the ministry of Jesus around 31 to 32 AD, probably around 30, actually 30 to 31 perhaps. Can't be certain, but perhaps. When he set up his headquarters in Capernaum, uh, stayed at the house of Peter perhaps, according to what we can gather. Uh, ministered in... Now this, now you know these places now. Come on, somebody. Yes, see, back home, you have to picture it. Now you can see the area. Chorazim, you'll be there tomorrow. Bethsaida, Magdala, hello. Mary Magdalene was healed. Cast out seven devils. He'd go up into a high mountain to pray. Now, now you know what a high mountain is. You've seen them. These are high mountains. And I was saying the other day with the partners that were here as we were out on this water, it's a little bit more choppier tonight than it was then, but I said, I want you to imagine when Jesus said, go over to the other side, and He's coming from this direction this way, or either this direction that way, and these guys are rowing in a boat at night. They've ministered all day. It's nighttime. Now what you've got to remember is there were no lights on the hill. If you didn't have a full moon, it was dark on this lake. There were no oil lamps inside these boats. Now there may have been some on the lower part, but if the wind starts blowing, you don't have much of a chance of a whole lot of light. They get to rowing, get midways in, and your Bible says that the wind was contrary to them. Meaning, they're rowing against a situation that's resisting them. Has anybody ever had a situation that's resisting you? You've got a destination and a manifestation, but you've got resistance in the process. And there are some times, no matter how many people are rowing with you, you can't make it to the other side. I think I'm going to preach just a little bit. I might just go old school if you don't mind. For me. Now, Charlie, I'm looking at the water, son. Don't tell me what to do. You're the cameraman. I'm preaching. Now, Jesus is on a mountain and it says He perceives they're in trouble. It's night. He goes up in the fourth watch to pray which starts at 3 o'clock in the morning. You know and I know if you stayed on this lake, the sun's not up at 3 in the morning. He's praying they're in a boat and He perceives they're in trouble. They're in a situation that's contrary. How fast would it take Jesus in the natural to come off that mountain and get in the middle of this lake that would have been maybe eight to eight, nine, well, nine to ten miles wide back in that day. You tell me how fast can a man come off a mountain and go five miles to meet a group of people? Somebody who runs, talk to me for a minute. How fast can you jog at a decent speed and go five miles? Somebody talk to me to jog. You know you jog. What do you say? 35. It's going to take Jesus if he's jogging off the mountain. And if he's, if he's walking on this water jogging, it's going to take him 35 minutes to get from that. And here's a man that knows because he's an athletic, he's a soccer player. Look at this right here. Comes off this mountain. But wait a minute, that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said that they're in trouble. He perceives they're in trouble. And immediately. Are you all listening? Immediately. He comes to them walking on the water. How do you get transported off a mountain in the middle of a lake? Same way Philip did when an Ethiopian eunuch was preaching. He was preaching and he got caught up and went back to Samaria in a moment's time. It's called a rapture. That's what happened. Now I want you to shut the lights off. Can, can we do that? Can we shut the lights off on the boat for the effect? Just the lights. Just the lights. All right, Charlie's going to cut the camera off. Now I want you to see what it's like out here at night. Listen to the wind. All this, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. God Almighty. All of a sudden, you're a disciple and you are rowing a boat. You don't have a boat that's sitting up above the water. You got a boat that's about four feet above the water, three feet above the water. You're a group of men, 12 men, six on one side, six on the other side, rowing a boat, and you can't make it to the other side. And all of a sudden, you look up, perhaps in the moonlight, and you see somebody dressed in white coming to you, walking on the water. What you gonna do when somebody you don't know who it is is walking to you on the water? What you've got to understand is back in that day, according to the tradition of this lake, 
Mendelman wrote about this and others, that if you were a fisherman fishing at night, because these lakes are fished at night, not during the day, have you noticed you don't see many boats during the day? They have nets, they fish with nets, they did it then, they do it now. So the fish will surface at night when the water is cooler, they catch them at night, and that's why you eat them in the afternoon. So the fishermen are fishing at night, that's why they're out here. Other boats could have been out here, but their boat was here. Most boats wouldn't have been out because it's contrary wind, and you're not going to catch too many fish when the wind gets crazy. But they're going to the other side because Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. But you look up and you see a man walking on the water. When that man is walking on the water, the tradition of this lake is there were thousands of boats that have sunk in this lake for different reasons. Because they went in a storm and didn't make it. Because there have been wars on this sea over the centuries. And there are boats. And it was taught back in that day. If you ever see a spirit coming to you on the water, your boat is about to sink. Because it's a dead fisherman warning you you're next. Now that's a fact. So when they look up and see this, they cry, it is a spirit. And they are petrified because they know they're in a storm. And they know that normally in a storm, if you see that by tradition, you're going to die. So you got 12 disciples in a boat that think they're going to die because they see. But all of a sudden, well... Simon Peter, who's always the brashest and the boldest of the bunch, he thinks to himself, now wait a minute, somebody is walking on top of this thing. Now if this boat is about to go under, I ain't going to stay in a sinking boat. So I'm going to find out who this person is walking on the water, because if he can walk on it, maybe I can walk on it. Y'all ain't hearing this. We always preaching Peter. Why was Peter trying to impress people? If I, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And he's going to get out there and walk on water just so he can tell his grandbabies, that, yeah, I walked on that water. You wouldn't believe it. One day I got it right out of the boat. Nobody else. What is he, what's he doing? This never made sense to me. Why would a guy just want to get out and walk on water? The reason is, the tradition is, the boat's about to sink. So he says, I'm going to find out. He gets to looking at it real through the moonlight. He says, Lord, watch this now, if it's you. That don't even make sense. Because it either is or it's not. Now what if that wasn't the Lord? And it said, come on the water. <laughs> what if it would have been a spirit? He'd have sunk when he got off the boat. But see, he didn't have nothing to lose. Because if the boat's sinking, you're going to drown anyway. Come on, y'all, get with me here in a minute. I'm going to preach this. But when he realized it was Jesus, Jesus said, Peter, come. And Peter stepped off the boat. And I can, just, I can imagine him kind of looking back at the guys when he did as if to say, boys, y'all can stay in this ship. If this ship is going down, I'm going to go out there where the man can defy gravity. And I'm going to walk out there and break the law of gravity. And I'm going to show you that, we, my God Almighty, help me, Jesus. Now picture him. So help me, if I see if I see a spirit walk on this water, I'm gonna freak out right now. I want you to understand something. I'm here, I'm here with I'm here seeing all kinds of apparitions appear in front of me right now. Imagine, let's say, ten feet out, twenty feet out, and you're in a boat, and it's tossing, and you're not gonna make it. And Jesus says, "Come," and he walk. Now imagine, you can walk on top of this. Peter then gets out there and starts realizing, hey man, this shouldn't be happening because in the natural I can't do this. Boom, he starts sinking. Now we leave him there. But Jesus grabs him by the hand and says this, what's over your head is under my feet. Alright, now that will preach right there. What's over your head, meaning you're in the middle of a storm but it's under my feet. You can't make it to the other side, but that's under my feet. You're not supposed to be able to make this boat row in the middle of a storm, but that's under my feet. Has anybody ever had God show up and say, what's over your head that you can't handle is under my feet because I gave you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, we leave the man out there. Now, we preached it. Well, Peter and Jesus had to reach down, and he pulled him up. So we see Peter. We leave him out there on the water. But I want y'all to understand something. He walked back in the boat. Don't leave him out there drowning. He walked back in the boat. But here's the cool part. And then immediately, in these stories about the storms, go read about the storm. He calms the storm in the midst of the lake, and immediately, they're on the other side. Hold on. That's five miles away. How do you get a boat? You're going to get this in a minute. How do you get a boat in the middle of the water, in the middle of a storm, to the other side? I'm going to tell you how. The same way Jesus got you out of your trouble. The same way that you went down to an altar one night 
And Jesus set you free in a moment's time. The same way that God had you when you were bound by drugs or alcohol or addictions. That you showed up and all of a sudden Jesus showed up and said, I will take you to the other side. You see, we sometimes fail that it was Jesus that said, let us go over to the other side. He's in a boat on one occasion and he's sleeping on a pillar. And the Bible said the boat was full of water and the boat wasn't sinking. I've been around enough fishermen to tell you that when the boats get filled with water, the boats are supposed to sink. But your boat ain't going to sink even when it's filled with water. When Jesus is inside your boat, because Jesus is to a river. The river wants to go over to the other side. You might go over with holes in your boat. You might go over with your boat full of water. You might go over with broken up. I feel like I'm talking to somebody that's in this boat. But you're going to make it to the other side. And I think that's where everybody ought to just give the Lord a shout at the boat tonight. 